This week makes me sad. Yeah, I don't like a lot of poop. I don't either. Normally, Luke is here to cover the poop stories. I know, like. But you had to be in town. When there's poop, I get the week off. Nope. It's it's your week. You're on poop duty this week. Guys, I don't know that Simba's going to want to be on camera either because Simba's not really pickupable. No, Simba's not. A, Simba's not not quite. He... Well, I can pick him up to like transport him from one spot to another, but Simba's five years old. And he's a biter. And I'm the only human he loves. But we're going to work on Dan. He's he's going to pee in Dan's shoes. No, he's just a biter. Like, Dan knows he's going to get bit at least once. I've been bit on every limb at least twice by Simba. But he's a good boy. He just has anxiety. <laughs> it's not his fault. He's chewed the shit out of me, but he's a good boy. He is a good boy. Ah. <sighs> All right, let's get the intro going. Oy vey, this week. All right. Daddy, come here. Each week, oh. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? The cat's not going to say hi. She does not look happy. <laughs> No, Dottie Super doesn't like being picked up. Oh, the ears. The ears yeah. are back. What's funny is she's such a nice, gentle kitty, though, that, like, this is all she does is she glares at you, and she flattens her ears, and then she starts to wiggle, right? Oh, let me go. And I then heard she turns that. Off. I heard that. Okay, all right, go get a treat. <laughs> We're a good sport. All right. Well, first off, this week this was a breaking story last week, and we didn't ha we didn't have a have a write up for it. But now we know what actually happened. Oh yeah. This was some crazy shit. Soldier who led police chase in armored vehicle charged with driving under influence of drugs. Yes, it was not actually a tank. Well, it just didn't have a gun. It's not technically a tank. It's an armored transport vehicle. Virginia National Guard soldier faces charges of driving under the influence of drugs and eluding police after authorities say he drove an armored military vehicle in a two-hour police chase. Uh, police on Tuesday night pursued the M577 armored personnel carrier along Route 60 at Interstate 95 before the chase ended with the driver's arrest in downtown Richmond. Um, and didn't he, he said someone gave him orders. Well, he was on drugs. No, the story I heard said he told, he said that he had gotten orders to do this to test the readiness of the local police. Well, okay, but you know, who gave him the orders was the drugs. <laughs> okay. Joshua. I'm saying, that was, that was. The, that was the excuse last week, was that... He was under orders. How is that going to hold up? When nobody avail nobody's going to go, I didn't order him to do that. That's not my... I didn't do that shit. You're goddamn right I ordered it. You can't handle the truth. Joshua Philip Yebut, 29, of Richmond, was arrested for allegedly driving under the influence of drugs. State police charge him with one felony count of eluding police, and one felony count of use unauthorized use of a vehicle. Guard said the unit was doing routine training when Gabbett allegedly drove away in the vehicle. Why? Yeah, you can't just do that. So once again, Grand Theft Auto, not a lark. I, I also I also want to put up point out that he was on. They were doing field ex. They, they were training. They were doing exercises with the vehicles and stuff, and he was on the drugs. Yeah. While they were training. How did nobody notice that? What drugs? What were the drugs? We have the way Dan describes the military to me, like they live up your ass crack. I I just, I, I just be, imagine being in the middle of maneuvers and all of a sudden, sir, the APC is leaving. Um <laughs> was that scheduled, sir? S sir? Is it, is it supposed to do that? Supposed to go? 
And then he's just I ninety five on a chase, yeah. and it wasn't exactly a high che- high speed chase. Yeah, those things I can't imagine go very fast. The vehicle could only drive a maximum speed of about forty miles per hour. Let's hope he stayed in the right lane. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do if that guy won't move? Honk at him? <laughs> yes. This is New Jersey, motherfucker. We don't care. <laughs> Slip off anybody. It's, how do you just just not hooked out? We have we have maneuvers today. Okay, let me get my drugs. Yeah. Couldn't you have waited until after to get the drugs? Yeah, you would think that you would wait until after the potentially dangerous exercises where you learn how to not get killed. When you're not in command of ten tons of mechanized machinery maybe then you do the drugs yeah not before drugs are drugs are our dessert they are not the main course you don't start drugs are a sometimes food (laughs) they are not an always food oh well let's ramp up slowly on our horror let's this I, don't next... to, I don't want to do the poop. I know. But it's going to happen. So just, we'll get there. Okay. Let's let's start. This is, oh my god. Everyone involved in this is horrible. Everyone. Except the people who were not involved. Yeah, only the people involved. The people who got had it inflicted on them, not so horrible. But the people who were, everyone is fucking horrible. Upset restaurant employee hires homeless man and stages robbery to teach boss a lesson. Really? This is some crazy shit. Disgruntled employee hired a homeless man and staged a robbery to teach her boss a lesson after he repeatedly sent his wife to open the restaurant while he stayed home. Uh, Sean Tran, 47, Worked at Gina's restaurant in Woodburn, Woodburn, Oregon, when she opened up the eatery with the owner's wife, uh, Chung Lu Huang, uh, an activity she felt was unfair. It was not fair to make uh, Chung Lu Huang uh, work more and possibly dangerous. To get back at her boss for not coming to work as often, she talked to a lawyer, and then they went and they filed a uh, worker's lawsuit. No, here's what she did. She hired a homeless man from Portland to pretend to rob the restaurant while the two women were there alone. Tran reportedly offered the homeless man, identified as Conan Dehut. Conan. I'm preferring to pronounce it Dehut. Dehut. Conan Dehut. And think of him as a large slug-like creature. Um, 36, she offered him a cell phone and... A barbaric large slug-like creature. <laughs> she offered him a cell phone and cash to pretend to rob the restaurant. The two allegedly practiced the robbery, quote, to make it look as real as possible. And the practice, uh, Duhat... Oh, well, they changed the spelling of his name. It went from Dehut to Duhat. Oh. And then it changes again to Duhat. <laughs> so Do- no idea. Do hot! <laughs> Do hot me! Do like, hot me! Know. Just scramble the fucking vowels, man. I'm not kidding. Look here. It's right here in the... Here's the the first spelling of his name in the article. Right there. Fucking white people names, man. Who even knows? Here's the second spelling. And then here is a third spelling. They're trying to fuck with me here. Um, that's, that's some quality editing. During the stage robbery, let's call it Conan, entered the restaurant differently, which Tran attempted to block. Once Conan forced his way inside, Tran placed money on the floor for him. She turned and fled. Now, here is the kicker. On investigation, officers discovered surveillance footage of Tran dropping Conan off behind the restaurant an hour before the robbery. Dear. Yeah, there's there's your mistake. You got to drop him off like a block away. Or give him money for an Uber. Yeah. For fuck's sake, just chalk that up to expenses there. If you're going to plan 
a felony at your place of work, you should know where the cameras are. And they we used to know all the all the years I worked in the mall, we used to know where the store cameras are just so we knew where to stash bottles of water that we weren't allowed to have on the floor. Or like drinks. Because most retail jobs you're not allowed to have a drink on no. the floor, but you're talking all day, so that's kind of like torture. Yeah. So you would learn where the blind spots were on the camera for no greater hijinks than to hide a fucking small soda or something. And and even though they were faking the robbery, they were arrested on attempted robbery, unlawful use of a weapon, and menacing charges. So you're I mean, going... He did cut her arm and take the money. Yeah. He did rob the place yeah. because he took the money. <laughs> Although, no, no, it's not real because we planned it. We're, we're going to let him do it. Yeah, uh, that's no. fine, but he still took that money. He's, yeah, that's still, there's not a pretend jail for the pretend robbery. You're really going to jail. And it's not a pretend robbery once he takes the money. Yeah. Then it becomes a real robbery. Ugh. You guys are just staring at me now. Oh, I've never had a good picture of this, but every now and then Peggy and Dottie, because they look so much alike, will just sit next to you and next to each other and stare at you like the twins from The Shining. <laughs> uh, it's very cool. Well, let's we're back into naked territory, and this is not ah oh, the tattoo on this guy, the tattoo on this fucker. Ah, oh. I keep trying to talk Dan into tattooing my name on his neck, but he won't do it. This guy tattooed something else on his neck. Texas with angel wings. Oh. And it's a, it's a bad picture of Texas, too. It's it's skinny Texas. It's Texas. Yeah, it's like. It's Texas before the third kid, Texas. <laughs> it's Texas before that last barbecue. Yeah. Pasco Sheriff, naked man, broke into home, used rake and attack. And I want to point out he has Texas here, but this happened in Florida. Newport Richie. I used to live I mean, there. Maybe, maybe all his exes live in Texas. <laughs> that's why he hangs his hat in Tennessee. Well, Newport Richie, that's not Tennessee. I used to live there. I know, but that's how the song goes. That's how the song goes. Okay. 26-year-old man was naked when deputies say he broke into a home and fought with residents. Incident took place 6 p.m. Friday. Uh, the residents called to report that an unknown naked man had broken into the house. I love the phrasing there. <laughs> as if there could have been a known naked man. I mean, there's the neighbor who breaks in naked like once a week, but that's just Charlie. <laughs> this is this is a mystery naked man. Sometimes he just likes to borrow myself, Tanner. Maurice Castanato either opened or climbed over the back gate and then went through an unlocked door to enter the res residence. He started yelling at the victim and, quote, bowed up as if to fight the occupants. As residents threw Castanato out of the home, Castanato grabbed a rake and struck the resident several times, inflicting minor wounds and breaking the rake to pieces. The occupant then took a hammer from their pickup truck, chased Castanato down the driveway, and struck him three times. A sheriff's dog tracked Castanato to a nearby Pontiac Street. He was arrested. He refused to answer questions. And here is, of course, no, to no one's surprise, alcohol played a role in the incident. I don't understand how a hammer wins a fight with a rake. <laughs> Have you ever gotten one of those damn Walmart rakes those with the plastic ends on it? But the range on a rake is so much better. That's like fighting someone with a six-foot claymore with a dagger. You could fart on those things and they would shatter into a million pieces. No, it was... it No, because those aren't sharp enough to puncture. This was like a metal rake. Those cheap, shitty rakes won't puncture you. Well, he still managed to break it apart somehow. I'm just saying I would go for a longer weapon. <laughs> hey, in this case, the hammer won. Which is amazing. I just... I have been drunk. We have all been very drunk. We have been super ass-kicked drunk. I'm a lightweight, and I have never, yeah. ever been drunk enough to be naked in public. I have never been... It takes a hell of a lot of booze to make me drunk enough to sing in public. How drunk is 
naked in a stranger's house fighting them with a rake drunk. How drunk is that? I'm pretty fucking drunk, man. And I, we can tell this is not his first experience being pretty fucking drunk because, again, look at that goddamn tattoo. Yes. That is a drunk man's tattoo. That's not a tattoo you get sober. That is not a sober tattoo. That is a tattoo you wake up the next morning. First of all, you put angel wings on empirically the worst state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Florida, whatever. At yeah. least they got comedy. Texas <laughs> is scientifically the worst. the worst state. I look forward to your comments. Okay, Ronan said he was hammered in more ways than one. <laughs> That's getting hammered the hard way. Yeah. That's getting hammered like you do on your show. Okay. You should you should switch that to a rake. Okay, this is this is point of no return, people. We we are now I'd argue that Alabama is worse, you'd be wrong. We're now um sliding down the the unpleasant slope. The poop, the poop slide. This is, this keeps happening, and I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm saying right now I am against this, and I would like people to stop doing it. Do you remember when we had the mystery pooper at the, at the uh, high school, and it turned yes. out to be the school superintendent? Yes. We also had a mystery pooper at a golf course, so I don't think they were caught. These, well, the, what, the superintendent was damn well able to get to a toilet he just decided he wanted to poop outside on the on the track field, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So now let's. And this is this is Australia. Um, Brisbane Phantom Poo Jogger outed as corporate bigwig quits job after identity revealed. The man and the picture. The what picture is. The is picture? Be that's because people busted him. Did they catch him in the act? They caught him in the act. Oh my god, his face looks so serene. Like he doesn't look like someone caught pooping in a public place. Andrew Douglas McIntosh, 64, was photographed by two local amateur detectives defecating on a footpath near an apartment complex. McIntosh resigned from retirement village giant Avio hours after the story broke yesterday. He's charged with public nuisance, but that will be dropped after he paid a $378 fine. For months, he had stopped off several times a week in the early hours of the morning to defecate in an alleyway of an apartment block. McIntosh was caught by two neighbors who told the Courier Mail that his behavior was, quote, just so blatant and regular. Well, he had his fiber, at least. The duo brought a wireless night vision camera they used to get a blurry image of Macintosh. Wow. From there, they waited six days before taking a photograph of Macintosh in the act. That's devotion. You are an executive for a retirement village company. And what do you do in your free time? You go to an apartment complex, a specific alley... And you drop trowel and you poop there. Is life in the Shire that bad? <laughs> I mean, it's the fucking Shire. I, why, why? You have, he has, he has money. Just hire a hooker to beat the crap out of you. <laughs> like everybody else with too much money and issues. Okay. Like I understand your mother was a drunk and daddy didn't love you or whatever the sad story is, just hire a hooker, just step on your balls and stilettos. Stop pooping and people live there. Yeah. You, you can buy a toilet. I know you can. Shit, Kim Jong-un took a toilet with him to Singapore. Because he's worried about people like harvesting. Testing his... and harvesting his poop to see what he's eating and check his right. health. Yeah. So he brought his own toilet. Really? He did. That's a whole new level of paranoid. And if Kim Jong-un can bring a toilet from North Korea to Singapore, you're oh, asking... Dolly, you can go have a shit at the Starbucks. Yeah. They have Starbucks in New Zealand? I don't even know. Don't Whatever know. your local breakfast 
food chain is probably has a bathroom. And if you buy a cup of coffee, you can just poop there. But that, that, fucking... that picture, man. <laughs> that picture is kind of amazing, yes. I gotta say, for 64, he's in good shape. Look see at that I, thigh definition. See if I can blow that up a bit. There like, we go. He's got some fucking thigh muscles, man. And the look on his face is like, you, I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you pesky kids and that dog. Oh, I, got one. I got a piggy too. Well, next up. Piggies for one today. This one was pretty bad. This, this, this was pretty bad. Okay. Yeah, admittedly, that, that was pretty bad. This one is even worse, poop story. All right, all right. And I'm sad that this happened. And I don't know what to make of this. It's from Lee Valley. Lehigh Valley? Lehigh. Lehigh. Okay, Lehigh Valley. Driver allegedly poops on another man in a fit of road rage. What did you eat to get that kind of projection? Two drivers got into an argument, and Steve Novak, master of understatement. Two drivers got into an argument, then things got messy. Henry George Weaver of New Tripoli faces a harassment charge after he allegedly, well, the accused and the victim got into a road rage argument, leading the accused to defecate on the victim, Pennsylvania State Police said in a succinct news release. How is that harassment and not assault? You pooped on him! Yeah. You And how did... Like, I assume they were both out of the cars. Yes. But even still, presumably they were both standing up. You you pooped on him! First, yeah, we're, we're trying to, to picture the logistics of this. I'm really curious about the logistics here. I yeah. Really you you pooped. how does this happen was this was this like a, a like a projectile situation that's what i'm saying like did you just have a lot of taco bell and just like did you have the volcano effect going on cuz that happens did you sometimes. ask him to please lay down <laughs> or did, oh here's an even worse picture in my head if this was a road rage incident my instinct is to not get out of the car for those. Right. So probably what happened was the guy came up to his to his door, rolled down the window, and the angry man pooped on him through his window, just turned around and right on him. I feel like you'd have enough time to close that window. You could try. Unless he already, like, unless he'd already dropped trowel, in which case I'm not opening the window. Uh, the problem is, maybe he had manual windows. You just, oh God, oh God, no! <laughs> just, yeah, that's just, no! I don't know, I'm very confused about the logistics. I thing. am too. I am too. Can you imagine being the cop that got this call? <laughs> he did what on you? 8.45 in the morning. He what? I think that's like the end of shift for cops. He did what? So like, okay. you've been no. on duty all night already. And you're like, what, what? No. 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 I'm getting me an Egg McMuffin. I'm going home. Fuck all y'all. You're pooping on people. How did you... God damn it. How do hey, you get... scratching the printer. How do you get into a mindset where you think to yourself, okay, I know how to solve this situation? I have never been able to figure out how poop on it solves any problem unless you triumph the insult comedy dog and even that really no uh, i mean that dog doesn't actually have an ass oh uh, lady minchow pointed out on duty you said duty i did you did say duty i thought we could get past without any comment but no but no you said duty this is the internet this is the internet one last one this week. No, no poop, but a surprisingly honest naked rampage. 
Are there tits on his naked rampages? I feel like once you're naked, shit get, shit's real honest. Naked man arrested after attacking Van in Glastonbury tells police, quote, I was tripping my nuts off. That's a quote. A man who was found stark naked in the middle of the road at Glastonbury, acting in a bizarre manner, said he must have taken some acid at the foot of the tour. A witness slowed down his van, and Liam Robert McDowell ran toward his vehicle, rambling and swearing, started punching the bonnet, that's the hood for you Americans, and windscreen, that's the windshield for you Americans, before ripping off a windscreen wiper. That's a windshield wiper for you Americans. When the police were called, they found the defendant sat in the middle of the roundabout, still with no clothes on, clearly under the influence of something, and made an obscene gesture saying, quote, it's really important that I fuck myself. Well, Liam, mission accomplished. Yeah, good, good you, job. You are, in fact, fucked. He was later interviewed. He said he could not remember committing the offenses and said, quote, I was tripping my nuts off. I mean, depending on how clumsy he is, that could have been literal. <laughs> he said he was tripping his nuts off, did not know where his clothes were, but said taking the acid had done it, adding that he would pay for any damage from his benefits. I, I, he, he, he said he recalled going to the Springs at the bottom of Glastonbury Tour did some meditation, said he took some acid, and I've never heard this phrase before in my life, and had a mental fail. That is... What is a mental... Excellent at understatement. <laughs> They're really good at understatement. <laughs> what you is know, a like mental fail? Oh, so, bit of a shake. Had a mental fail. Oh, I had a bit of a mental fail there. I'm fine now. That's not English. I'm fine. Even though my, my dick's hanging out, but I'm fine. I like the, the fact that the reporter really goes out of his way to use the phrase tripping his nuts off multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> it's a great quote. It is, how often do you get to write? Who's the, who's the, uh, uh, Matt, Claire Herbo. <laughs> Well done, Claire. Well done, Claire. How many times are you going to get to write tripping my nuts off? Tripping his nuts off? Tripping their nuts? How many times are you going to get that, <laughs> use that phrase in an or article? fully conjugate that. Mi just, just milk that one for all it's worth. Yeah. Milk yeah. those nuts. Because a career in journalism, you may never get to do that again. Oh, my God. Unless you're assigned a story about Brexit. Had a mental fail. Mental fail. I, I, I still, I just, it's really important that I fuck myself. I mean, at least he's got priorities, man. <laughs> what is it about acid lately? Has acid changed? I've never done acid. I, the way well, I remember no. acid is, you know, you it's kind of too bad that Dan's gone to bed because he used to do acid when he was a young goth metalhead. You kind of see like trails and stuff. And you he said he hallucinated a dragon once. Yeah. You know, you don't. I Normally, you, you're not very active about it. You're, it's not an interactive experience. You're kind of woogie. Apparently now there's like VR acid. VR acid. God, can you imagine if you dropped acid and then put on one of those things? Oh, you'd be dead. You would lose your shit. You would completely lose your shit. Your conception of reality would be broken. Yeah. Oh. That, that would be it for you. That's That's got to be on Liam Robert McDowell. That's got to be on you. That's an epitaph. It's really <laughs> important. I know so. No, no, no. It's really important that I fuck myself. That I, I feel like as as summing up a life, <laughs> I feel like I was tripping my nuts off. <laughs> says so much more. Oh, uh, that's a for <clears throat> kids. If you're gonna do the drugs, you need someone to. You need a, a keeper for a little you while. You need a sober sister. 
tag team that shit. One of you gets fucked up, the other one stays sober. Back and forth, trade off. And if you're gonna go out into the nature and meditate and then do the drugs, make them drugs you have done before. Yeah. Whose effects you understand. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's not a good time to try the new drugs. <sighs> it's really important that I fuck myself. <laughs> I've never just. Well, you did it. <laughs> We've learned. Okay. No dispute, no problem, no conflict will ever be resolved by shitting on someone. No. That's no. what's known always as an escalation. Like, what do we call that? There's Godwin's law, there's Murphy's law, there's Poe's law. What do we call that? I don't know. Scat's law. Scat's law. There, there's, there's just nothing. Nothing gets better by pooping on someone. No. Nothing. Unless you're into that sort of thing and you're both consenting, in which case, great. But it's not a great method of conflict resolution. It is not. Poop is not a good conflict. Shitting on someone does not resolve things very well. Not usually, no. I was not taught that in debate club. <laughs> I wasn't in debate club, but... I mean, my mom was a social worker, and not much of her job involved that. We've also learned, if you're rich enough to afford a fucking house, poop inside, you filthy poop in mother... Your house. You filthy motherfucker! You're just filthy! Poop inside! We've learned... Um, We've learned that it, it's, there is, of course, apparently a threshold... Which you will be naked in a stranger's house fighting them with a rake. We don't know what it is, but it does exist. That drunk threshold does exist. I hope to never find out. We've learned... If Actually, if I found out, I would die. Because if I drank enough to get to that point, I would be dead. We've learned that if you attempt to stage a crime to make it look real, you're still going to jail. Yeah. Especially if you actually commit the crime. <laughs> if you forget to fake it. And finally, we've learned maybe hold off on the drugs before military training that day. Yeah. Do it later in the evening. Do it Make after. Make it like a celebratory, yay, we did the training drug binge. We're just for Good for team building. We're just fortunate it wasn't Bazooka Day. Yeah. 